Hello, this is Das Dosange with Cypher Cloud Professional Services, and I'm delighted to bring you another session of our Friday Chalk Talk. Today, we're going to be focusing on three of our data protection methods which we utilize for our customers around the globe. And those three protection methods which I'll touch upon are encryption, tokenization, and data integrity monitor. We use a combination of these data protection methods to ensure that our clients and uh, customers around the globe meet their security requirements as they move their information into the cloud. So let's touch upon the first one of these, which is encryption. What I'd like to share with you here is an example of an enterprise, and they have one of our Cypher Cloud security gateways deployed in their infrastructure. And here we have a user, I'll we'll call him user A, and they're going to actually enter data into Salesforce. And as they enter that data, it actually enters our Cypher Cloud gateway, and that information then becomes encrypted. So what you have actually put into the Salesforce Cloud is an encrypted version, what we call protected ciphertext, of that actual information. So that's an example of user A entering information into the Salesforce Cloud and it's protected as it leaves the enterprise, but as it comes back and they want to view that, we actually decrypt that information and send it in clear text back to user A. So he or she can actually then go about their daily activity. Yeah. Now let's talk about a uh, second method, which we call tokenization. And here we have user B, where that person can then enter their information using the same browser and access into uh, the Salesforce cloud. And as they hit the second gateway, we're calling it Cypher Cloud Gateway number two, that information is actually getting tokenized. So that data never actually leaves the enterprise premise, but we do have a token that makes its way into the Salesforce cloud, which is uh, an example of, or a reference, I should say, to that actual data set within the enterprise. So this piece is protected. We're calling it a uh, uh, a cipher token, if you will. And as that user accesses that information, that protected token comes back into the Cypher Cloud Gateway where it gets detokenized and a clear version of that data is represented in the browser. So user B can go about and actually then do additional activities uh, on that Salesforce Cloud. The third method where we have uh, a method where we can protect that information is actually a uh, different variety of what we do here at Cypher Cloud where we're actually going to send clear data into the cloud. This is a unique use case where the customer is not necessarily looking to protect that data, but they actually want to know who modified, who changed that value from A to B. So here user C enters their data, and as it hits the Cypher Cloud gateway, we actually do a hash of that data set. So let's say it's your first name we will actually do a hash of that, store it as John in our database, and then John will be entered into Salesforce in clear text. So anybody viewing that information in the cloud will see the actual value. The beauty of this is if anybody changes it, if user C goes back into the Cypher Cloud Gateway and changes it from John to Harry, they will be able to see that there's a record in the Cypher Cloud Gateway that allows you to see who changed it at what time and in real time. So you will have actual information as to who changed that actual information in the Salesforce cloud. This is in clear text as it's being viewed and as it actually gets viewed into the browser. So those are three examples of data protection methods, encryption, tokenization, and the data integrity monitor which uses the hash. So let's talk about the first use case for encryption. A lot of folks want to actually have a encrypted value in the Salesforce fields where they can actually have different types of rule sets applied to that uh, data. And what Cypher Cloud's value proposition here, in addition to the encryption, is making that information in Salesforce searchable, sortable, and actually having different list views. So as you put that into Salesforce in a protected manner, you can actually do your business as far as processing that data from a clear view from the user's perspective, but a protected view in the Salesforce cloud. So encrypting that data not only allows you to move to the cloud, but still retain a majority of that functionality. 
Additional use cases for uh, the tokenization method is whereby customers don't want the actual data leaving their premise. So in some cases, we have certain customers that don't want that data to leave their geography. It could be the country boundary. It could be the corporate enterprise actual uh, postal code or zip code, if you will. So they have different rules that they have to comply with where the data itself does not leave the premise. And in this case, we send a token that lives in the Salesforce cloud that still meets their requirement for protecting that information at the same time being compliant without having data leave their uh, physical boundaries, if you will. The third one is a data integrity monitor where we actually use a hash. The use case here is for global enterprises that may want to keep an accounting or a record of who modified the actual data rather than protecting the data itself. So let's say you change the value of this from one to two, they just want to know who modified it. And in global manufacturers that we have as customers, where they have uh, folks from Europe, North America and Asia changing the records in real time. They just want to keep an accounting of who actually modified that record and if they were authorized to. So this data goes in the clear, but there's a value in our table as far as who actually modified it. And that use case is ideal for those who are monitoring and doing a lot of manufacturing, whether it's in the automotive or pharmaceutical businesses. So in summary, uh, these three data protection methods allow you a diverse way to actually protect your data and keep a track of who's actually modifying the data in the cloud. Customers, based upon their use cases, will use a combination of one, two, or possibly all three, depending upon their requirements. These are the essential building blocks for starting your data protection uh, policy, if you will. And as you start to lay that foundation, you can now look into additional layers of security with antivirus, anti-malware, data loss prevention, and other components that complement the base level of encryption, tokenization, and data integrity monitoring.